Woo! What's going on guys? Orange Swarm coming at you guys today with another video. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about day two um, of the Detroit Lions mandatory minicamp 2022 report. Uh, but before I start, man, don't forget to hit the subscribe button in the bottom right. Don't forget to hit the notification bell on my videos. Don't forget to like and comment. Um, let's get to it, guys. There's a lot to kind of report here. Um, I wrote a lot down. Um, I was really scouring for some information today, and I got quite a bit of it from guys like Jeremy Reisman, John Macaron, Mike O'Hara, and Tim Twentyman, and Jeff Risden. Um, let's start it off, though, guys, because this could be a long one. Um, Hutchinson still shining. Um, he almost picked off a screen pass today by uh, deflecting the football. Uh, yesterday, I guess they did a tip drill where um, the D lineman had to get past a, to get past a, like a blocker. The blocker doesn't really get much into it; just kind of puts his body in front, and then the guy just goes around him. And there's a usually the D line coach or a linebacker coach. I was a linebacker, so uh, they would have this small little ball, and they would throw it either to the middle. Left ear or right ear. It's just a tiny little ball. It's like a read and reaction type drill. Get your hands up, hand eye coordination. I really like that drill. And uh, so you, your job is to kind of deflect it, put your hand on it, just try to get your hand on it. It goes right in the middle, left, right ear. Um, so they did a drill days before that. Next day, drills to the field is what you really like to hear. And he knocked down a pass and he almost intercepted it. Clearly frustrated he never got the ball, apparently. But I guess it was a really nice play by Hutch. Uh, Jamal Williams is out there, man, with that high energy still, man, even in doing kick return drills. Um, just he's, he, he's back there dancing. He just brings a high energy. He brings a character to the game. Uh, and he's, he's just a fun kid to watch, man. He's just... He's fun to watch. I hope he sticks around for a little bit. Then they did some tough situational football with, with a couple scenarios. Uh, the first scenario was offense on the opponent's 18-yard line, pretty much a red zone. And uh, 10 seconds before half, needing a touchdown. Uh, the first one was Goff. He was looking for uh, Amon Ross St. Brown in the end zone, but was broken up by nickel cornerback A.J. Parker on a nice play. Uh, Parker was kind of, uh, uh today, and uh, they, we'll, get that, uh, we'll get to that in a little bit. Uh, then the second unit came on. It was Trinity Benson in, in the second unit with a touchdown with, a, with another great catch with a tiptoe in the back of the end zone. Touchdown from quarterback Tim Boyle on a real nice pass. So uh, keep that in mind, too, with Boyle. Um, <clears throat> number two, both of Detroit's offense won this one, too. Um, the ball was on a 25-yard line on the defensive side. Ten seconds to go. Uh, uh, one timeout, needing a touchdown. Goff completes a pass to Monroe St. Brown at the 14-yard line. And then it's called a timeout with four seconds left, so they had a little bit of time. And then Swift with the touchdown catch, beating Ju Julian Aquara to the pylon. So nice play by Ju by Jared Goff and uh, uh, Swift and Amon Ross St. Brown getting the ball down there and getting in the end zone. And then the next one was Boyle, then completed a dart, kind of like the same thing to, to Tom Kennedy with the second unit. Unit uh, got down to the 14-yard line um, as well. Timeout with five seconds to go. And then uh, hits Kennedy again uh, for a back-of-the-end zone score. Um, offense wins this one. Um, the touchdown was, a, I guess, a really nice pass. It was, it was split between Mike Hughes and Brady B Breeze, uh, uh, the safety. So nice, nice throw and catch for Boyle and uh, Tom Kennedy. Looking good right there. And then uh, uh, Khalif Raymond with a really uh, nice catch of the day, pretty much the catch of the day, uh, diving in between three, two to three defenders. Goff fit it right into a real tight window, and uh, uh, Khalif Raymond made, made a really nice catch. So you like hearing that too. Then there's more Hutch. Uh, we're going to get to that too, man. There's a couple more Hutches down here, a couple more Hutchinson uh, um, highlights, if you will. Not really highlights, but just talking about them. More Hutch. Uh, his energy and tempo is really through the roof right now. Uh, you, you saw that at Michigan when he was there. He was a high-tempo guy, an energetic guy, a fired-up dude. Um, he exploded through the gap with a really nice spin move to get quarterback pressure, then um, got through again and almost batted the ball down with his left hand, causing more QB pressure, more QB hurries. So that's what you want to see, too. And to all the people that said that Hutchinson only has a bull rush, no. He, he, he really doesn't, man. Um, yeah, you know, when you do analyze him, uh, when you do analyze him, uh, there's a lot of guys at college level that just, you know, they do have one, maybe two uh, moves in their arsenal. 
a spin move wasn't really on Hutch's ar Hutchison's arsenal whatsoever. So this is actually a good sign that he's using the spin move. He 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 he's actually learning as he goes. He's he's obviously has been working on his arsenal. So because you never really seen him do a spin move at Michigan. Not that I did it. I watched tons of tape on this kid. Not saying he never did it. Not saying he was never a thing. But he was, it's very rare that you saw him doing spin moves. And that's good that he did that. He got through. Caused pressure. Uh, pretty much almost a sack. So you, you really love that. To hear that about Hutchinson. That he's evolving. And um, he's just getting closer and closer. So love it. Um, Swift. Um, still a big major part of this offense especially in the Detroit passing attack he made a couple nice catches again um, UDFA wide receiver Khalil Penton um, he continues to impress he keeps making plays out there he, he, he's turning heads um, they're going to have they're going to have some thinking to do when it comes to this kid I think he's in deep though to make this squad but he is definitely a practice squad guy he is 100% going to be on the practice squad so far you know, it's early. It's only early June. We still got training camp to go. The pads aren't on and stuff like that. So, but right now he's turning heads. He's making plays. He's doing everything that they want him to do. So, um, he's pretty much like, you know, he's on the outside looking in. But my goodness, he's playing well. And then defensive end, Joshua Pascal and nose tackle Jonathan Penasini were not in, in uh, um, attendance whatsoever. Penasini, I think it's a personal thing. Uh, Dan Campbell, the head coach, said that he was going to meet with Penasini sooner than later. I think they're, I think they're meeting tonight, Tuesday, right? Wednesday. Well, they were supposed to meet. Um, they were supposed to meet sometime. I think maybe to yesterday or, or today. And I think they were gonna. Um, I think he was personally excused, so I think he's back. So he he has something going on with Pascal. It's a little bit different. Is it a leg injury? There has been uh, um, there has been confirmation that he is suffering from a lower lower extremity injury. Um, we know that he had um, uh, what's it called? He had melanoma in the foot uh, back in 2018. He had three surgeries on that foot. That shouldn't be a concern. Um, he's I'm, I'm pretty sure he's cancer free. Uh, obviously, or he wouldn't have been drafted, right? Let's hope he doesn't, like, you know, like, pray to the stars. Nothing like that has come up. But he did suffer a leg injury back in two, back last year, 2021, 2021, where he missed his bowl game, the Citrus Bowl, and he missed the Senior Bowl because of that, too. So um, it's probably that. He might have retweaked it because he was playing at that rookie minicamp. He was there for the rookie minicamp because there's a lot of people asking on social media, well, did, has he even practiced at all? He did in rookie minicamp. I just don't know if it was... For the three days or two days, what it was, it was a, it was a small rookie mini camp. Obviously, all these little camps are. Uh, but I, I only remember him going one day. He was paired up with Hutchinson. Hutchinson on the one side, Pascal on the other side. And then after that, you didn't really hear nothing about it. Then, 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 then you started hearing about him missing some time. So he obviously tweaked it in between there. Who knows where he tweaked it? Maybe at rookie camp, maybe at the OTAs. Who knows? But he is injured right now. He is he is um, um, going through something. And Hank Campbell said they're going to be taking it easy with this guy. So more Hutch too. We got uh, we got some more Hutch too. No, coming up. No, not we don't. No, we don't. Sorry. Uh, tight end James Mitchell. Tight end Derek Deese. Wide receiver Jamison Williams. Wide receiver DJ Shark. Defensive end Romeo Aquara. Linebacker and the Patrick guy they picked up. From the, from the LA Rams, who played for the Rams. Cornerback safety, Ify Malafonwu. Cornerback, Jerry Jacobs. Sean, uh, Deshaun Elliott, the safety. We're at practice, but not participating. Uh, did DJ Chark, you know, people prop their ears up and say, oh no, it, it sounds like it's a rest day. It sounds like there's nothing going on. It, um, apparently, he was in good spirits. In good spirits, you know, you remember he is coming off a broken ankle in 2021. So probably just a rest day for the veteran, for the young veteran. Um, anybody else really to be concerned about? Um, no, pretty much everybody else, man. Melifon, who just got hurt, you know, they just found out that he had a wrap on his leg. Deshaun Elliott might be a little bit concerning because this guy is just a complete band-aid. But he is a decent safety, but man, is he a band-aid. And everybody else is kind of, you know, nothing new here. Uh, limited were guys like left tackle Taylor Decker, um, TJ Hawkinson, and Jeff Okuda were all limited. They're coming back from injuries. Taylor Decker's taking easy with that foot. Hawks got that 
that thumb or, or, or whatever he's got going on in Akuda. We all know about Akuda in the ACL. So they got to be really extra careful with him. Uh, they were going through some positional drills being held out of most team drills, though. So those guys were, you know, getting a little bit, a little bit of work on the sidelines, doing walkthroughs, but they were doing some personal drills, but being held of most team drills. So that's just that's just normal. Um, Boyle was the number two quarterback today. Um, did he get his? Uh, did he kind of you know perk his ears up um, after uh, uh, Dan Campbell kind of switched over to David Blau for a little bit? Now the second team, you know, O and D getting a, the, the second team offense and defense getting a lot more looks. Uh, they're very young out there, so I, I think it looks like Campbell's trying to get more playing time for these guys. Um, more Hutch here and there. Here, here's where we get some more Hutch. Uh, he took majority of the snaps today. They're just they're 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 really playing this kid, trying to see what he's about. Um, he beat Matt Nelson twice. Uh, uh, today one was a sack or a holding penalty take your pick whatever it was he was going to get to the quarterback if uh, they didn't call the sack if they didn't call the holding penalty anyways and the other was forcing the quarterback to throw earlier than he wanted to which is good um, Hunch is, Hutch is getting closer and closer to earning his way as a full time starter it looks like and uh, he's just playing the part yeah he did beat Matt Nelson uh, we want to hear him beating guys like Decker we want to hear him guys beating guys like Sewell that's going to come. Um, he's kind of been playing everywhere, so um, he's even been kicked inside, and we'll get to that a little bit too. Uh, but you know what I mean? As long as he's beating guys, that's all I care about, man. As long as he's beating guys right now, it will time. It will come when he faces Sewell and when he faces Decker. It's going to come. Now today, it was cornerback Mike Hughes' turn to get first team reps at nickel cornerback. Yesterday, it was A.J. Parker. Uh, looks like another early battle that's kind of brewing um, early right now. Uh, the kick return candidates in order was Godwin Igubuke, Khalif Raymond, DeAndre Swift, Craig Reynolds, Khalil Pimpleton, and Greg Bell, the, another undrafted free agent. Now the second team O-line that hasn't really been getting kind of talked about was kind of uh, 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 put in the paper today. Um, from left to right, it was left tackle Dan Skipper, left guard uh, Kevin Jarvis, um, Michigan State guy, I believe, right? Kevin Jarvis. Um, center, uh, Evan Brown, who, who kind of played well last year when Frank Ragnall went down. Right guard, Tommy Kramer, another undrafted free agent guy that we picked up from Notre Dame last year. And then right tackle, Obina Eze. So um, Eze's never really played right tackle. I don't think he has at all at the college level. Pretty, pretty much strictly a left tackle. Uh, so that's new to him. So that's your second kind of unit right there. A couple guys I really like. I think Skipper will probably make this team. Um, Evan Brown is, is pretty much a lock. Uh, Tommy Kramer, you know, all, all these guys could be. All these guys could be uh, on the uh, uh, team as backup. So if they're second team, they're pretty much the backup. So you got to have backups to your regular starters. Um, <clears throat> apparently, though, Jonah Jackson sat out of team drills and had his arm heavily wrapped. Don't know what arm it was. Um, Logan Stenberg came in there and replaced him. So um, they showed enough, uh, uh, what's it called? They showed enough um, trust in Stenberg to throw him out there on that first team and replace Jonah Jackson. So he needs to, he's another bubble player, so he needs to like smarten up, get better too as well. Safety Kirby Joseph had a rough outing. Uh, the rookie out of Illinois uh, on a couple plays, Aaron Glenn and Aubrey Ple Pleasant um, running towards him. Uh, on a play trying to coach, barking at him, um, barking coaching points though, um, at, on his mistakes, trying to coach him up a little bit. Not like abusing him or anything like that, but just, you know, running towards him, trying to trying to really make it clear what he did wrong. So Joseph had a little bit of struggle. Uh, he, he's struggling out there apparently right now. Doesn't really look the part. Um, he looks the part athletically, but he's kind of, it looks like he's having a rough time um, out there on this defensive they think he's thinking too much. That's what Jeff Risden said. He, th he thinks he's out there thinking too much. So he just got to calm down, breathe, let the game come to him. Uh, defensive end, Austin Bryant made a couple nice plays. He's been hurt. Came back yesterday. He got a sack on an 11-on-11 11 11 drill. And then he got into the backfield. I'm making a nice run stuff. Uh, setting the running back kind of flying backwards. It's not uh, uh, there's, there's no tackling going on right now, but he got in there so fast. A couple D linemen got in there. Boom, hit the running back. He kind of 
they they fell backwards, no harm done. So um, Oroarie and Walker were, were looking really excellent in coverage today all day. Remember though, there's no DJ Cherk out there, so it looked a little bit different the uh, the wide receiver units for for uh, for Team One. Uh, Cephas and Benson continue to dominate second team defenses. Um, sooner than later, you're going to see these guys start start going on on um, the first offense to see what they're made of. Um, it, it, it's going to have to happen soon. Maybe they're waiting. Maybe they're waiting until training camp. But these guys are completely dominating these second team defenses. And then rookie cornerback Chase Lucas is looking pretty solid out there as well, holding his own against Khalil Pimpton and had a nice pass breakup versus UDFA Corey Sutton, another big body wide receiver. They were on the third team. He's on the third team D. But he's playing well. Lucas needs to keep stacking these days to get noticed, and it looks like he's getting noticed a little bit. So good for Chase Lucas, man. A small, he's a smaller corner, but he's but he's he's fiery. Um, Siebert, uh, the kicker, he made two in-game kicks of 43 yards and 53 yards. Riley Patterson, take note. Uh, we need you to be better. So then cornerback Savion Smith made a couple nice plays, showing some quick feet and awareness out there. Cornerback Mark Gilbert is more of a physical corner. Uh, he's playing well against the bigger wide receivers. He did get torched, though, against Khalif Raymond, a, a, a very speedy wide receiver. It was, it, he was torched for, um, like, a long touchdown, too. So Gilbert is, more, is, is a bigger corner. He's going to play better against the bigger wide receivers. Has some trouble against speedy guys. Bobby Price, been here for a few years now, was, was a safety. Now he's a corner. Looking really athletic out there today on that Wednesday. Uh, made a couple nice catches on some on some catch drills. So that's good for Bobby Price. Well, he's another bubble player as well. Uh, Parker was struggling, like I said earlier, with guys like Pimpleton and Tom Kennedy with the quicker guys. So he needs to be a little bit better too. Uh, we'll see what happens there. That, Like I talked about with the Mike Hughes and A.J. Parker, that could be a, a camp battle going on. Then quarterback Jermaine Waller retired. He's a rookie. Um, I think the Lions ended up giving this kid $36,000 guaranteed or something like that. I forget how much money they gave this guy. But they gave him some money. He retired. Put him on the reserve retired list, whatever it is, and he, he's done. He's done. So I um, don't really know too much about him. Um, I, think he, I, I don't even know what school this guy went to. I want to say Georgia. I want to say Georgia, but um, I'm, I could be wrong. Uh, but Tim Boyle did look much better on day two. Like I talked about earlier, it was a little bit of fire under his butt. Um, we'll, we'll see. But the accuracy and timing did look a little bit better. Though he did have an interception by Brady Breeze. Breeze stepped over the middle, picked him off. Um, and I guess I guess uh, uh, Tim Boyle could be could be heard yelling out. I didn't even see him. And I guess like he, um, I guess Brady Breeze barely even moved. I guess he took a step fo- a step to the left or step to the right, picked off the ball. So uh, Boyle has to have way better awareness than that if he didn't see the guy, man. So be aware. But that's he's thrown too many picks. Man. He's just thrown a lot of picks. But he did have a better day. Blau did make some nice throws today though, but he wasn't. He didn't have that wow factor apparently. But he did look good today, Blau again. Hard Knocks was there. Hard Knocks was in the house. Um, Surprisingly, Dan Campbell was pretty much like, you know, like I thought he'd be a little more excited. He's pretty much neutral on, on the whole thing. Almost seemed like from his from reading his comments that he just he doesn't really care. Like he he doesn't really care that they're there. He's he's saying that they got a job to do and they got to start stacking up wins. They got to start winning games. So he didn't really want to talk about it. It seemed like so. Um, that's a little surprising because you know. Campbell is kind of a, you know, he's kind of a media darling. He says a lot of ridiculous things. He's all business. He was all business today about it. Didn't even really want to talk about it. So that, and that's okay, man. That's good. Don't let it get to him. So that, that's actually pretty good. And then John Kaminsky, the, the, uh, the free agent that we picked up the guy that got released by the Atlanta Falcons, the defensive end slash D tackle, whatever you want to call him. I guess he was looking his best today at left defensive end. Uh, they kind of was shuffling him everywhere and, to note, this is really this is not really surprising, but this is I told people this was going to happen, and I got and I got pretty much called an idiot that it would never happen. Um, Hutchinson was actually playing inside of John Kaminsky, playing almost a defensive tackle position. He was inside Kaminsky's right shoulder, where um, Kaminsky was playing left defensive end, and Hutchinson playing right inside. So. 
I'm telling you right now, Hutchinson's moving up and down this whole line. He's not just going to be a defensive end. So if you guys are just looking for him to, to go against offensive tackles all the time, it's not going to happen. He's going to be going up against guards and centers, everybody, man. So that's that, that that's a good thing. It's 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 not a bad thing that he's versatile. He's versatile, and so is Kaminsky. So that's not a bad thing. But that's a nice little that's a nice little package right there with Kaminsky and Hutch right there. So you know, looking to do some things. They're trying to find a scheme. That's what they're trying to do here, guys. So they're just trying to find guys to pair up with each other, and whoever becomes the the, the best duo trio, whatever they can get out there, then they'll put out those packages. So that's that's a good thing. Then on. Uh, uh, undrafted free agent wide receiver Josh Johnson was struggling today. Uh, he had two drops and he had double and he double caught two others. Uh, the concentration, I guess, just wasn't there. He had some trouble dropping some balls in college. Um, Josh Johnson and he he was doing it today, so he needs to concentrate a little bit more. But he is a talented wide receiver. But he he's going to be in trouble making this team. Um, last but not least, this is the last page. Uh, running back Craig Reynolds took some running back two uh, 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 snaps, which is really good and looked good. Catching the ball cleanly and showing off some good blocking skills. Uh, making room for tight end Garrett, Garrett Griffin on a touchdown catch and run. Uh, Reynolds looks like he's clearly the RB3 here. He's the backup to Swift and Jamal Williams. It just, you know, that he was just, they're just trying to get him some more looks, and that's okay too. You give guys like Swift and you give guys like Williams um, a little bit of a rest. There's nothing wrong with that. Jamar Jefferson seems to be slipping down the totem pole um, a couple times now. I've seen this guy, you know, he's, he's, he's behind. He's, he's behind guys like Reynolds lately. He's been, now he's behind today. He was behind undrafted free agent running back Greg Bell. Was ahead of him on a drill. So uh, Jamar Jefferson needs to kind of step it up. Uh, he looks like he could be the guy on the outside looking in. Greg Bell looks like, you know, he's getting a little bit more play, but it's still early. Um, James Houston, a little bit of James Houston stuff going on. Lined up at right defensive end, uh, which is nice. Versatility, we talk about it all the time. He went up against undrafted free agent rookie Obina Eze, and he literally schooled Eze. Um, ducked right under his big arms. He got these long arms. He ducked right under his arms, showed some athletic ability, got to the quarterback, got the sack. Um, showing a lot of quickness and drills too, but he's clearly the smallest defensive end on this team. He's only 240 pounds, 240 plus pounds, if that. Like, yeah, so he, he, he's 6'1", six, 6'2", six six so he's not a big dude, man, but he was a, was a dominant Dominant defensive end at Jackson State, smaller school, and like 16 and a half, 17 sacks, whatever he had. And uh, when he came here, he was pretty much just going to be, um, what's it called, a, a linebacker. But he's got versatility. So if he can get to the quarterback and if he can play a little bit of D end, why not? You know what I mean? We love the versatility and we love hearing that he that he blew by Eze. Even though Eze is an undrafted free agent guy. Um, Houston was only a six round pick, so it's not like it's that big of a deal. Um, but it's good, good for Houston. Don't get me wrong. Great for Houston. Uh, and then Shane Zilstra, the tight end, he, he was playing well today too. Man, caught a couple of nice catches, sold a nice fake too. That freed up Benson for a really nice game too. That's, that's a mental part of the game that's, that's lost in football. And, but that's note, but that's clearly noted by coaches, by good coaches. You know what I mean? So if he's faking guys out, making guys kind of come to him um, and freeing up other guys, excellent. That's excellent work by Zilstra. He's, he's definitely got some praise for that. And then last but not least, Williams, Jamison Williams, uh, the guy that we shot up to go get uh, from 32. He gave up a couple picks. Um, was hanging around the first team offense today. And... Um, He's always hanging around the first team offense, which is a good thing. Um, and he was catching some balls just kind of like after the drill, he'd be the guy catching the balls and handing the team back to the quarterback or back to whoever was handling ball duties. And um, I guess he made a couple of nice one-handed catches, but uh, doesn't really have a good arm, apparently. <laughs> doesn't really have a good arm, which is fine. But it's good that he's hanging around the first team offense. He's getting really acclimated to the guys. He's um, really paying attention and just – focusing on what he needs to be doing, taking those mental reps. But that's it, guys. That's a long video, but there's a lot to kind of talk about and a lot to comment on. 
Don't forget, guys, that's the video. Don't forget, uh, hit the subscribe button on the bottom right. Hit the notification bell. Uh, get all my videos and like and comment what's going on. Day two, how do you guys like that? It's a wrap. Uh, day three should be tomorrow. I think there's three days going. I think it's a three-day camp uh, from, from what I'm understanding. And uh, we'll get more on that tomorrow. But thanks a lot, guys. We'll talk about it. Let's talk about day two. What you guys like? What, what didn't you like? What do you want to hear? Go, go Lions, one pride. But boom.